By now, it is a well-known fact that SpaceX CEO Elon Musk is obsessed with starting a human colony on Mars. Musk desperately wants us humans to be an interplanetary species. Many of Musk's objectives seem plausible. However, there are some plans that are straight out absurd and impossible to achieve. One of Musk's many insane plans involves nuking the Red Planet in hopes of terraforming and making the planet more hospitable. In this video, we take a look at Musk's insane plans to nuke the Red Planet and why NASA isn't so keen with this absurd plan. Stay tuned! Elon Musk's plans to colonize Mars have been put to paper for a few years now. While SpaceX are making improvements to their transport vehicle to get to Mars with the introduction of the new Super Heavy rocket, there's still a lot that needs to be done before humans set foot on the Red Planet. Elon Musk wants to terraform Mars and get it ready to make our life easier and bear the harsh conditions of the Martian surface. Now, this is easier said than done. Terraforming a massive planet is no joke. It would likely require billions or possibly trillions of dollars and countless resources and time to terraform the Red Planet. Elon Musk, however, came up with a simple plan which is straight up absurd. Musk wants to drop nuclear bombs on Mars. Not one, not two, but he basically wants to bombard the Red Planet with nuclear weapons. In his own words, Musk describes nuking Mars as a continuous stream of very low fallout nuclear explosions above the atmosphere to create artificial suns. Like our sun, this would not cause Mars to be radioactive. This statement seems straightforward and simple, but it's trickier to implement. When asked about the risk involved in this crazy process by Twitter, Elon responded by saying, it's not too risky in my opinion, and the process can be adjusted and improved in real time. We essentially need to figure out the most effective way to convert mass into energy, as Mars is slightly too far away from the solar system's fusion reactor, the Sun. It's worth noting that nuking isn't the only option available here. Interested academics and scholars have also given ideas on how to warm the Red Planet. Their ideas include redirecting comets or covering the entire planet in thousands of solar reflective satellites, which, to be honest, seem quite expensive. Now, Elon Musk's idea to nuke Mars might not get apt support and NASA isn't at all keen at Musk's plan to nuke our neighboring planet. The goal behind terraforming is to release carbon dioxide gas trapped under the Martian surface to thicken the atmosphere and act as a blanket to warm the planet. According to a new NASA-sponsored study, Mars's surface does not retain enough carbon dioxide that could practically be put back into the atmosphere to warm the inhospitable planet. Changing the desolate Martian landscape into a place humans can explore without life support is simply impossible with the technology we have today. According to NASA, the current atmosphere on Mars consists mostly of carbon dioxide, which is too thin and cold to support liquid water. The key component of life, the gases that would be released from Mars's surface, will increase the temperature to a point where liquid water will be stable rather than instantly turning to ice. The atmospheric pressure of Mars is less than 1% of the pressure of Earth's atmosphere. This means that even if the planet's temperature was stable enough to support liquid water, water would quickly evaporate or freeze, owing to the immense difference in atmospheric pressure. This is why thickening the atmosphere is just as important as raising the temperature on Mars, both of which can be accomplished by successfully terraforming the planet. But is there another way, a less explosive alternative? Many studies have been done on terraforming over the years but recent scientific observations of Mars by NASA has brought new game-changing information to the table. New information has been provided on the abundance of easily vaporized materials or volatiles. The history of volatiles like carbon dioxide on the planet and the loss of gas from Mars' atmosphere to space. Using data from NASA's Mars Odyssey and Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter, researchers analyzed the distribution of carbon-bearing minerals and the occurrence of carbon dioxide in the red planet's polar ice caps. Unfortunately, the results aren't very optimistic. 
it turns out that there's not enough carbon dioxide remaining on Mars to provide substantial greenhouse warming, and this is inclusive of the gases beneath the surface, were they to be released into the atmosphere. An interesting fact about Mars is that there is a lot of water, albeit in ice form, which can be used to create water vapor, but this is negated by studies that show water cannot provide substantial warming on its own without having a significant warming by carbon dioxide, which is scarce on Mars to say the least. The temperature will not allow enough water to exist as vapor, let alone liquid. Some experts have proposed introduction of chlorofluorocarbons or other fluorine-based compounds in an effort to raise the atmospheric pressure. But that theory is foiled since these gases are short-lived and would require an expansive manufacturing plant, definitely not a short-term idea. The intellectual race to terraform Mars has quickly turned into a race for carbon. What scientists now believe is the missing piece to the red planet's puzzle. The biggest deposits of carbon dioxide on the red planet can be found at the planet's polar ice caps, and they can be exploited by vaporization or using radioactive explosives. This would straight up double Mars's atmospheric pressure, but unfortunately, it would still not make much of a difference. We therefore need to find other ways of exploiting carbon dioxide to make the planet more habitable. Well, that's all for today's video. Hope you enjoyed watching this one. Thanks for watching.